Director, working in Addison Technologies in the capacity of a director. And uh, I've been part from, of Addison for the last 15 years, basically born and brought up in Addison. And uh, coming on, uh, next 20 minutes, I would say, I would be talking about uh, Agile and how we can ensure uh, quality can go hand in hand. This is absolutely my hands-on experience. We have been working on Agile for the last uh, five years. You call it a safe agile, you call it a scaled agile, or you call it a DAD. We've been working on this with around 150 people together. But yes, co-located team. And this is not just one team. There are a few more teams in Addison working in the same model. Some are in products, some are in services. We have a few of our own frameworks in Addison for the agile. Few are customer uh, supported frameworks. We have our own mentors and coaches. Obviously, they get trained by other mentors and coaches over there. Uh, this is my personal experience of my project, of which I have been part for the last five years. So I'll be sharing, again, like a previous presentation, there might be certain things not easily digestible, quite possible. <coughs> but uh, we scaled it. We worked on it because it worked for us. It worked for our product. Now, before we move on, I'll just share a few semantics so that we all are clear that about the type of the product we are in, so that you are able to relate to it better. Okay, It's an enterprise product, around 40 million customer base throughout the world, live product. Okay, it, That product has been there in market for last 10 years. We moved on to, we were always working in Agile, but we actually moved on to Agile five years back. It was always but Agile Okay, before that. Releases go every six months. We have a sustenance team also along because obviously with such a big customer base, you need to have a supporting team. Again, that supporting team is part of us. We are absolutely co-located, but there are certain prime product owners who are there in US, but we do a shadow over here with proxy product owners also. This is not just one project. There are similar projects running in the same model. Few with less number of people, 2025, few with more people. So it's not just one story which I will be talking about. There are many with little different variants. We have a absolutely common backlog at a portfolio level which SAFE talks about. And then we break them. There are a group of scrums who pick up a feature and then they take it forward. So at a portfolio level, different. At a release level, it's different. So basically, now we are trying to fit our project in SAFE. That's how I see where we got to know about SAFE two years back. We had to do it because we didn't have an option. Uh, with this enterprise product, we our team got scaled. It grew up to around 150 members. We had no option. We had to work in this model. It was a very tough journey. I would say 80% of our leadership members churned out. They left, new came in, because it is toughest for the leadership members. It's really very difficult. The mindset change is not easy. That was at least my experience all through. So just one thing, this enterprise, which has got 40 million customers, is it that they are different customers and it gets customized for each different customer? No. It's a standard so, uh, product. Different customers about. can pick up different releases. Okay. But there is no specific release which is customized for one customer. So it's quite possible that a customer is on an older release because he's not interested on any new feature. So he's not upgrading. But there is no uh, release which is customized for any specific customer. But so you I mean, are getting driven, your product is getting driven from the product management group that's and right. your team will probably be as part of the product, not about the project driven team which is going to customize the product and sell it to a particular customer. No, 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 it's our team which is driven by product owner, our team which is doing the enhancement, delivering it and sustaining it also. This team has product owners on board, managers on board, architects on board, the tech team on board. So there is a services team which takes care of customization in this case? It's an engineering team, the scrum team, which takes care of the enhancements, rather, I would say. There's no customization happening, again, coming back. No, it's base product, no customization for any customer. Our requirements come directly from the product owners. Now, product owners can say that, okay, there are five, six customers together interested in this feature, so let's go ahead with this feature. But it is driven completely by the product owners. Prioritized, owned, everything by the product owners. Team sizes is between the, as the agile framework around seven to nine it's people. Five to seven people. Five to it seven. Normally, it's normally five is the baseline. We keep one or two people additional because of the attrition cases and the ramp ups happening. Because being in India, 
we do have to maintain our own pyramids. We all know so that. You, when you talk about the product owner, it will be not be at the team level. It no, will be there at the product level only. Yes, but the product owner is a group of team because product owner needs to be available with every scrum team. He has to be part of the standard. He is not part of that five to seven scrum team, right? But a product owner and architect is associated to scrum team. They might not be one one. One product owner is working with two three scrum teams. It's quite possible. But they have to be co-located, they have to be part of the standard because they are the ones who are owning the stories. They need to know how the stories are moving. And there is a common uh, sprint beginning and the end as defined. Everything is common. There is a common start, there is a common end, there is a common sprint planning, there is a common retrospective, there is a common look ahead. There is a common single prioritized backlog, one, two, three, four, five. There is no ones, there are no two ones, there are no two twos. That's how. Otherwise, uh, we could have not survived this. Excuse me. You said product owner is part of daily scrum. Daily stand-ups. You can't have product owners writing the story and then coming back in the acceptance meeting and saying that, sorry, I missed this out in the acceptance meeting. Right? So they might not be contributing in the stand-up. They might be standing at the back. And in case the scrum members have any question, they'll turn back and they'll ask that these are our queries. But they need to be available to ensure the effort which is going is going in the right uh, direction because what we say is the check is coming out of product owner's pocket. So he needs to ensure that the effort is being spent in the right direction. So they are owning the release delivery per se. Manager are helping them, shadowing them. That's how we define the roles over here. So I don't know how much I will be able to cover because uh, a lot of things are there, how we do our risk, how we do our technical debt management, how we do our planning, how we do our backlog grooming. I'll try and touch base something specific to quality only over here. So uh, I just spoke about. So what we try over here is not the best, but we always try to improve. So retrospective is the key. I just mentioned that we do a common meeting with 150 <coughs> people, right? Trust me, it's not an easy meeting. If that one hour or two hours is wasted, that means multiplied by 150, we are wasting that many number of hours. So even before any such common meeting, the leadership meet, does a dry run. They do, do a prep meeting and then they do a retro meeting, how next time the same meeting can be improved. And we do this for every common meeting. So we try and improve every day. That's what the key of Agile is. That's where the Agile word comes in. So this is last four years of journey because the first year was more about setting up their infrastructure tools and all those things. So few things we focused on was people basically training, career planning. Career planning comes, obviously we are now this DAD concept has come in, but uh, our complete organization is definitely not agile. The performance management system runs in a different way, the IT runs in a different way, the finance runs in a different way. They come once in a year setting up the goals, whereas that cannot happen in agile, right? So we try and match, bridge the gap in between them. Media reviews, consistent uh, follow-ups, or uh, feedback sessions after the sprint reviews, we try and do that. Leadership, that's the key thing, trust me. This is what I also vouch in my organization to other programs who are moving on to Agile. First and foremost, the leadership needs to be at the same mindset in the direction which you are moving. There has to be a person with the right authority understanding or self-mentored, he has the right coach with him in which direction you want to move. Because he is the person to whom everybody will be coming for waivers or shortcuts or uh, taking some sh uh, short paths and all those things. So leadership grooming is the key thing over here. Next is 360 review, I'll touch base about it shortly. Productivity, uh, impediments is one word over here, used over here. In Arisync, we have our own frameworks for impediments. Impediments can be anything. What we are trying to do over here is we are trying to enable our scrum team. What we have done with them, we have given them nine days, that is two weeks, effectively just nine days, right? Working days, because one day, one day goes into planning and retrospective and all. And we say you need to complete these X, Y, Z user stories in these nine days. Now suppose there are certain bottlenecks in between so before they can complete the stories, how will they tell? Whom will they tell? They can't come and retrospect after nine days, the manager will come back bashing, you have not completed your work, right? They have this tool in their hand wherein they can raise voice. This is our obstacle because of which the story is getting blocked, or this is an impediment because of which the story is getting blocked. Please help us. They have complete, uh, I would say, 
uh, ownership to raise any obstacle. They can raise a voice on a carpet, they can raise a voice on a group say that she's making a lot of noise, they can raise a voice on any of their seniors that they are not doing reviews on time, and we have an SLAs associated with it. We are quite strict on our leadership team, very strict on our leadership team. If the reviews are not happening, raise uh, an obstacle. Two days it goes to manager, two days more it goes to senior manager, and beyond that to a director level, and the actions are taken. So everybody needs to play their role. Yeah, please. So, what are the solutions that you said is that the retrospective is happening along the way? There is a retrospective. That can wait for nine days, right? So, if something is blocking the complete my story. See, there can be impediments which might not get smashed even for a year. You have raised an impediment. You say this room is not helping me, right? You cannot change it overnight, right? But what I'm trying to say, we enable them to raise any kind of impediment. There might be some impediments which go back to them. That guys, this is not feasible or this is your job to do it. You just can't put everything on other people, right? That can happen. But we still let them raise voice and we say thank you. Because what we tell our managers and leadership is that your salary is getting justified only if you are helping teams solve their impediments. That's your sole job. Solve the impediment. Manager is in office to solve the impediments, not raise the impediments. Empowerment. This is what I ju just spoke about. Please make them, please empower them. Because giving them nine days, agile is not easy. It's not easy for the scrum teams to do certain things, have a very strict DOD, and get it completed in that sprint duration. It's not at all easy. Customer focus. So this is a very key thing. If we are not following this, we felt that we could have failed very badly. Prioritized and a well-groomed backlog. The team is working on executing the stories. In parallel, the architects and product owners need to be constantly on the backlog ensuring that backlog is getting groomed and it is being updated based on various feedbacks. And that has to be a continual exercise. They cannot take a break in between. And we ensure that. Second is the constant feedback from the customer directly. And what we do is, after every sprint we ensure, whatever feature we have developed, we go back to the customer and we show them, is it acceptable? We might not be able to go to every customer, right? You go back and show this demo to one or two customers whom you know they are interested in this feature. Take their feedback. How it helps? If you have implemented a screen, you get a feedback, you can immediately go back and add a feature in, uh, sorry, add a user story in backlog and get it modified. At least you will not wait for six months to get a feedback and then see, oh, what we delivered, we could have tweaked it and we could have sold it better. So this is a mandatory stuff. Scrum masters raise impediments if these uh, customer feedback sessions do not happen every sprint. So this is very critical. No, no, there are no sequence. These are the areas which we focused on. And then if you have any on top of your head just for self-motivating people or just empower them, they will become self-motivating. The ownership of quality and delivery is with the team, it is not with the manager they will ensure that they are motivated. If they fail, you take the ownership. If they pass, give the complete credit to the team. They will become self-motivated. And trust me, 50, 60 people will run away by the time you optimize these things. Or you will run away, absolutely. Leadership is the first one. I think out of 10 managers, only one or two are there with us. Everybody ran away. We have a new set, we don't know how long they will survive because manager, management is the toughest role in Agile, toughest role. We have absolutely moved them out. We have seen so many presentations, they don't even talk about manager role over there. Although it's a very critical role. We don't need managers, we need leaders actually over there. Who, if we are, they are walking on the floor, they are spreading positive energy. They should not scare the people around. So this is what you were talking, the step by step. This is our step by step, uh, a brief snapshot of our journey. So. I'll just touch base a few. We started with roles. Initially, it was just Scrum. Agile is synonymous to Scrum. Later on, we added some additional roles. We have a very qualified list on what these roles mean internally. And then it came to managers, servant leaders. And then now we really feel, feel that we cannot move without a coach. A very independent coach who has no stake in the program should always coexist because that is he or she is the person who can help us improve. 
and that improvement is the key. If we stagnate at this stage, we say we are the best in the organization, it will never fly. It will never fly. Definition of done is the next part. The user story gets completed <coughs> means it should be completed. There should not be any case where we are coming back to that user story. And we ensure that, be it documentation, be it automation, be it any training uh, recordings, be it any uh, API updates or anything, everything has to be completed within that sprint. Do not come back again on that story again. So one more rule we have, uh, we have it's a sacrosanct rule, nobody can break it, that you cannot have a single defect or a technical depth in that user story once it is getting accepted. That means defects are zero, static analysis warnings are zero, complexity is less than 10. All cases are automated if they are feasible. That feasibility word is very important. Check the ROI, check the feasibility. If they are feasible, please automate the case. Why the hell do you need to add a manual test case if you don't want to execute it again in future? So please do not spend that effort. We used, in fact, I used to write in my early days, thousands of test cases for a code, right? And how many times did we repeat that? No. So to please don't add those test cases. If we are adding a technical debt over here. And we follow that and we mandate it like anything. There are no waivers for this. Artifacts, again, these are the same artifacts we have been talking about. But the key artifact over here is backlog. So backlog, uh, I believe uh, we have fine-tuned it a lot. What we do is we ask the product owners to enter the stories. They are the ones who own every story. They are the ones who own the priority of every story. And we call it that once the product owner enters the story, it is 20% groomed. After product owner, the leads and the architects add the acceptance criteria, refine the acceptance criteria. That means they have understood the story at a high level. They know what is to be done. That is 50%. When the team revisits the story and says we are ready to take it, then it becomes 80%. And in between, there might a lot of steps might be there. Like team might come back, ask the architects to refine the acceptance criteria, add some test cases, or add some checks and balances which are required in the acceptance criteria. Team understands what is to be done. Team knows where the changes are to be done. That is the time we say it is 80% groomed. And once the story is 80% groomed, then only team picks up the story. Otherwise, they do not pick up the story in sprint planning. And we ensure that at least current sprint and next sprint stories are groomed to that level. Culture. This is another uh, part where we have put a lot of focus. We saw in past what used to happen. Suddenly some of the leadership members will come. Either they are managers or product owners. They have got some trigger from the customer. Something has broken or they need some estimates or something. They will call the team, they will sit in the room for hours and hours, prepare their presentation and the full day is gone. We cannot afford this in Agile with nine working days. We just cannot afford it. So we made a rule. Four meeting free days. That means for four days, leadership cannot touch the team. You cannot go back to the team. Team can come to you. They can come to you for n number of technical questions, design discussions, reviews or anything. You cannot call them for status meetings or a skip level or a all hands or any presentations, nothing like this. Because they are the ones who are working on the code and code is the only thing which is deliverable, nothing else. So please let them focus. If they focus, quality can only be built then. Otherwise, you can never build quality if you ask the team to do a context switch. It was very difficult. When we first thought of doing it, we ourselves thought that it is not feasible. Four days, manager not talking to the team, how the hell is that possible? But it is possible now. If we keep a meeting on any other day other than Thursday, team themselves raises a, there's a mail which comes to me even from a new joinee, that why is this meeting on Thursday? Oh, sorry, not on Thursday. Why is it meeting happening on any other day? Today is a meeting free day. So you cannot touch us. So please empower the team. That's what we felt. Yeah. So what do you have stand up that day? No, the agile rituals, the team work keeps on going. So Stand-ups happen, on. retros happen. Uh, retros happen on Thursday, sprint plannings happen on Thursday, or grooming meetings can happen, design discussions can happen. Anything triggered by the team can also happen. They can walk up to any leadership member anytime. Uh, what I mean is those four days, do you have a stand-up? Yes, yes, yes. So manager can those rituals. Stand -up, right? Manager is just an observer in the stand-up. Yes. yes, he can yeah, He anyways see. has to get into the stand-up, otherwise I don't know how will he get to know what's happening. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, fair. that has to happen. So four days, four days. Four days. Sorry? Four days in a week or four days in a week? 
code is a migration. No, code is in a week. You can only touch the team on Thursdays. So our sprint starts on Thursday and it ends on Thursday. Like the next sprint starts on Thursday. So we keep it Thursdays because that's the day which is already full of meetings. So you can catch hold of the team. Like we are moving to a new site now um, in next one, one and a half months. So visit to those sites are also happening only on Thursdays. Because that's the only day where we can disturb the team, take them there, show them the new place and all those things. So you mean like you use us in 10 days of uh, sprint you have? Nine days. Nine days I'm saying because we count off Thursdays. Oh, so out of nine days, you only can keep meeting one day. Eight days you can't. Yes, you can only keep meeting one day. So one is Thursday, which where you have normal meetings. I've already striked that one off. And next out is next Thursday, which comes in between. Ah. You can only have that meeting. We take waivers if there is a customer visit. And we request the team and we apologize. Sorry, guys, we are taking this waiver. Leadership has to work in that apologetic way. That we are your servants. We are working for you. You are just you are helping us justify our salary. Um, we need to be humble ones. So this was our culture of focus, basically. That please leave the ICs. Don't bother them too much. Don't use emails and an instant message that you have just dropped a mail to your team member and you expect a reply in next half an hour. Please don't do that. Let them shut off their mails while they are working on the code because code is absolutely important. We started a culture of good code, wherein we give awards to the team and we have certain standards set. If you follow those standards, then you get awards and there is a huge amount associated. The reason is that is what the delivery is. Please focus on that rather than anything else on the earth because that's what is bringing money to our organization. <coughs> that has to be right. Next is the values as I was talking about and the key thing is discipline and mental toughness and that's for the leadership members. There are so many scenarios where you are so tempted to take a shortcut. I can give a waiver just now and I'll get 100% acceptance in the sprint. Or the customer is shouting, there's a program review happening with the customer. If this sprint goes low on acceptance, I'll have to answer over there. Should I take a shortcut over here? There are numerous instances. You need to be very clear that culture has to be there, guys. No waivers, no shortcuts. Please do not compromise on the quality because it will come back to you later. It will absolutely come back to you. Uh, I missed out one part on the roles. We also did one drastic change in last two, three years. <coughs> is we uh, reduced the boundary between the dev and the test teams. There is no dev role or a test role. There is a scrum team, there are scrum members. That's it. So we do not call anybody a dev member or a test member. Everybody is doing everything. But I completely agree. This is practically not possible that everybody does everything. But Whenever we are taking new members, we are ensuring that they just do not possess one skill. You should know scripting, you should know testing, that's fine because scripting is another important part of automation. But don't wear just one cap. Wear a little multiple cap. You might not be wearing all the caps. That's okay because no individual can do that. But wearing multiple caps, like, is it quite a quality? Sorry? Wearing multiple caps, yeah. quite the quality as no, so we feel other way around. Why do we need a developer doing a coding, coding and somebody else coming and ensuring that the quality is being met? Guy, you are doing a coding, please ensure that you are doing a quality coding for the first time. Don't let anybody else tell you how to bolt it. So that's the, with Agile, with such a minimal timelines with us, we cannot have so many phases. Although those qualifications still remain very important. Those qualifications happen at a different level because they need to be done on a different deployment scenarios. They need to be done with different components. That's absolutely fine. But we do not need somebody to do a UT for your code. It's your code. You're the best person. Okay. Or maybe your peer sitting next to you who understands the design very well. So d does that mean, uh, uh, I mean, in your scrum teams, uh, nobody verifies if some uh, if a developer is developing a code, there is uh, no tester to verify that. So if we it is working develop code. a code, there is a UT written, which is automated, there is an FT written, automated, the code coverage is tested, verified, it has to be 80% plus for the new code added, there is SA warnings checked, that is no SA warning added or deleted, complexity is within a limit. But all this is done by those five members. Nobody wears a dev cap or a test cap. That's all what I'm okay, saying. So it, it will be the responsibility of that person who is owning the user no, story. No, one, you know, one user story, one person does the coding, other person does the testing. Do it vice versa, whatever fits best for the team. There might be some user story on which somebody has a talent in that module, right? Okay. Let him code it, other people understand the design and test it. 
that's up to the scrum team how they do it. But we do not intake people just for a specific role. That's what my friend is saying. But sometimes tester is not aware about the coding standards. And there is no tester, that's what I'm saying. We have QA leaders with us who define the testing strategies, who write down the program level test plans and all. Right. <coughs> Once you're designing something and writing something, it's not possible that a coder sitting in this room is designing something, tester sitting in the next room is the one who's going to test it. No, it's the scrum team who is doing it together. And it is scrum team's ownership because it, if it comes back, they are going to own the quality. So are they also accepting or rejecting the work? Uh, we have, when we started this around four years back, we had a 22 member QA team separate. We were always working in that model, right? We do not have any separate team now. And I, I think it, like, except for four or five members, I don't see any one of them on my floor now. So that's the case. But we have new QA leaders with us who do continuous risk analysis, who define the testing strategy, who see the incoming defect trends and the queries from the customer, they define how our testing suit should move now, which all new cases to be added. So that part is still happening. The QA remains very, very important part. Okay, but uh, still those, uh, uh, what uh, you are just saying, right, uh, they will check what all new cases should be added. So yeah. those cases will be added by the developers only. Yes, yes, that's done by solely. Hmm. See, I think, uh, Everybody is a developer, but there might be a difference that somebody is expert on a scripting part. Yeah, somebody what, does a good testing of performance, so there's a chunk of people in different sprints who yes. do a good performance testing. So they will continue doing it, right? Yeah. But if you ask them, they might be picking up something of coding also, reskilling themselves and doing that part also. Okay. So they are normally the TLTs or the architects. TLTs are part of the scrum teams. Architects are not part of the scrum teams. So we have a separate roles for our architects. So and normally in a program, like for 150 a party, we have five architects. And what about TLTs? What TLT is there with every scrum team. So out of five members, one is TLT? No, no, no. Five are the architect members. TLT is there in every scrum. We have around 13 scrums running. 13 scrum in every scrum team. There, there is, is a TLT. Okay, so there is a TLT in every so scrum team. If it means this, if in one scrum team there's a five members, one is TLT. Yes, one is TLT. So my question is, uh, I understand this. But how do? You, is there a way that you integrate and somebody is doing some testing? Is there a separate team for that, or how do you? So uh, testing checks are there, I'll just tell you, but uh, a developer writes a code, he or his team member writes down UT cases which are automated, right? Then one of them writes down the FT cases and what automates it. No, just a second. And they commit it. Overnight, those automated cases are, like automated means they are integrated in the program suit. Overnight, those suits are executed every day. So you have a full automated regression test. Absolutely, absolutely. And when we started this journey, we have, see this is this was a legacy code of last ten years. Nothing was automated. We had three thousand manual cases, and we used to take four to five weeks to execute them. So it was not possible to automate them on a fly. We took a separate budget. We formed a separate team to form an automation suit on top of our legacy system. Now, once that suit is formed. Now any new user story which is coming in, it is little easy to plug into that automation suit. But bringing that auto automation suit was a separate charter. It cannot go hand in hand with the release. So that was done. Thank you. I, I would um, really say that next step is DevOps, right? You might have to go even beyond that now. So you, everybody cannot learn everything, but some boundaries need to be broken. Like we have these five to six uh, members scrum team, we have 13 scrum teams, but we have 23 modules. Every scrum team is not independent. That means every scrum team cannot pick up all 23 modules. Although that is the, uh, I would say ideal scenario, but that's not possible. But we still work in that direction. And if we work in that direction, maybe we'll be able to achieve 5% of that. That will ensure our backups are there, attrition cases are handled, right? Similarly, now when we move into DevOps, what is happening? The operations and dev team's wall is getting broken, right? That's what all DevOps is all about. Because you really need to just check in the code and it should go into the cloud, right? And the same developer might be sitting on the cloud system and monitoring it also. You need to be good at scripts also for that. You need to be an admin also. You should know how to install your software also. That's the next level we'll be coming on to. 
No. So we have 13 teams. We have our own backlog, which might have different epics. Right? Epics are the features. So it's quite possible, like, uh, there is one epic which is picked up, and there are two, three scrum teams who keep on working on that epic. Because it's not possible that every time you do a context switch, pick up a feature, bring that feature to a completion. But it's normally two, three scrum teams together who pick up an epic and bring it to closure. Do you have any cases where uh, there should be an end to end so these regression suit which I'm talking about, that's an end to end. So any case which is going up, sorry? No. That framework was bought by a separate team. Now it is written by the user story owners, like whichever scrum team is doing that. So what happens, you pick up a story, right? Every story might not have an end to end case, right? But while grooming that story, you define that yes, it has an end to end case with product owner and architect and you define that we would need to add two or three cases in the automation suit. It's many times it is the case is there that that framework does not exist for that module. Then we spend additional effort to first bring up that framework. So, so my question is, like, say, if you have three scrum teams, one way you want a single epic, right. and you want to create an expectation for that, right? These teams will collaborate and create that. Or? So we ensure that our stories are done in that way. That story dependencies are taken care of in the grooming. That if you see that this story needs to be done only before these two X, Y, Z, X, Y stories need to be completed, then first get them done and maybe those stories do not require any automation end-to-end -end suit to be added over there. So at but this point of time, only one scrum team creates the session? It all depends, yeah. It's a similar same product as the all scheme, the Yes, it's the same product. So how do you handle dependencies? It's not easy. So the, the recent challenge of ours is that um, there is a module um, because there is a high, big feature we are working on and normally if there is one feature, it is located with two, three modules only. It comes into that area only. Either it is database intrinsic or it is core intrinsic, something like that, right? So we what we do is that uh, we, we use this Git, right? We have uh, different levels of Git, the production part and the staging part, right? So we ensure the check-ins go into the staging by different scrum teams and together the smoke test is executed to see if things are failing, right? And if things are failing, the leads need to sit down together and ensure that those, uh, what do you say, the clashes are resolved. Yeah. But Mostly when you try to plan things like this, like multiple teams or multiple members working on a similar thing, the problem is on the dependency. One so if those dependencies are identified in your grooming, then do not plan those stories together. See, the, as is a 13 team backlog, we have ample stories, right? If there is a high dependency in six stories, we do not plan it. First, let the base stories get completed, then only we'll come to the next level. But our goal is like Kanban, Jo, then a work in progress should be minimum. We try the high priority epic should get completed first before we move to low priority epic as long as possible. It is not always possible. Other than that, this product has been in the market for last 10 years. We have a huge number of defect backlog also coming in. So team does have that work also to be handled in parallel. So how can you distribute the product backlog? Say you have 13 So we just had a release starting last week, okay? We had all the epics, right? We reshuffled our teams based on some expertise of the features required. They were not on the modules or the components, right? Now what we did, for every team we identified, you are working for this feature. Two, three teams working together. Now they have a clarity that in the next six months, this is the release backlog, and we are going to own these, these epics together. So in the big product backlog, you have small Exactly, backlog. exactly. So in big product backlog, you have your own small backlog, which is visible to you. But yes, as a common backlog, it has its own priority. It is the same thing as what safe features, right? Yeah, you have exactly. a product backlog yes, and then you have a team backlog, right? So, trust me, when we went for a safe training last year, our leadership team was sitting in that room, okay, we do this, we also do this, we also do this. We didn't have an option. Such a big team, it was a chaos initially, absolutely a chaos. So, uh, what I understand uh, from me is that uh, your dependencies in terms of technicality might be less, uh, but you might have functional dependencies. We have huge so, technicalities, dependencies, but, but the because, best part is that we are co-located on same floor. But what I understood from you is that you are already promoting uh, you know, uh, people to do multiple uh, technical things. And, and That's mostly, especially for the QA and dev part. We are doing that. 
but you have multiple technologies on which you are working like yes yet, absolutely Java. absolutely we are, this is uh, this system enterprise system of ours has a web based interface has a two e based interface has an xml based interface right so we are the we are the team who can accommodate java c c++ and .net any type of people into our program right with the pace which we are moving we did not have an option of having 20 25 members who are not coding so everything is still automated even in all technologies no 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 it's not automated we are see what we did was out of those 3000 cases we ticked out 250 key cases that these are the regression cases which need to be done and for that we took a separate charging and we automated that beyond that the new cases which are coming in which we were just discussing end to end cases only they are getting automated because spending your money and effort on automation is not easy. Apart from that, maintaining that is also very difficult. So our another learning was, please do not automate the UI cases as long as possible. Because that was a big issue for us. We have our web-based interface. The browsers keep on changing every second month. We need to support it on four or five browsers. How are we going to match that? So that was not feasible. So we still have the manual testing being done. No, that's fair. For example, UI you just said. Is there a separate team or again UI people are inbuilt? Because see, uh, you know, you, in order to develop that from the background, there might be different teams, as you said, might be building that feature. But on the UI, that guy is he part of one of these three teams? So one team? is UI designing. Yeah. So our team is not doing the UI designing. That UI design and the screenshot, how it has to be looked by, has to be done by the UI expert team. It comes to our product owners. So that's not our expertise. Once it comes, then it is team's ownership to implement it. So that, 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 that is a dependency. You can't start on a story. Absolutely, idea. absolutely. Product owner will not give that story to the team unless until the dependencies he is aware of are not sorted out. That is there. They cannot come to the team. So that's where I said that 80% grooming stuff help. Team has to come back and say, yes, we have groomed it 80%, this story is ready and now we can pick it up. Otherwise, they'll go and give it back to the product owner. And they do give it back to the product owner. That this story is not ready. We need this build or we need this RAML or we need this UI. This is not ready. And it goes back. So grooming is a big stuff over here and product owners pay, play a key role over here. And that's a big challenge because they need to continuously keep on grooming the stories. They continuously keep on finding the dependencies and resolving them. So this was uh, some of the quality stuff which we were discussing about. The key part over here is that zero defects at the end of every sprint. Here I'm talking about the defects related to the user story which you are developing. You have done UT, you have done FT, ensure that there is no known defect. But yes, the system is there, has been there in the market. Customers have been raising issues. So those issues are there, right? So what type of issue are you getting? Because uh, one, uh, see, we have, uh, we are currently on our 11 release, 11.0, 11 right? And in market, the releases are there from 8.x. There are certain customers who are using 8.x. One fine day, they find an issue and they raise a customer defect on that. We still need to ensure that that defect is fixed and that defect is fixed in that old release. So we are doing that sustenance work also. Yeah, my point of view is uh, you have this small team working on everything, right? The designers, not testers or developers. So they are uh, testing whatever they could imagine, whatever they could understand. So they that's where our QA leaders play a role. So if you see, there is a, a point over here, <coughs> risk to ship every sprint. So uh, I, it is my view is risk is no different how we used to do it in waterfall. Risk management has to be done in uh, agile also. But what we do is at the end of every sprint, these QA leaders, they go back to the product owners and say that I still see, although the team is saying that this software we have developed in the sprint is release ready, but I see a risk because these, these testings have not been done. Some deployment testing has not been done. This software is running across multiple lingual locations, right? It needs to be internationalized, right? He'll say that localization testing has not been done, deployment testing has not been done, and based on that, the product owner fine-tunes the backlog again. It's quite possible when you started the release the sprint, you said that performance testing is not required. But at the end of the sprint, you realize performance testing is must because we changed the core over there, right? So you cannot stop or you cannot break the sprint at that stage. So that's where that risk to ship keeps on coming in again and again. 
whether it is um, the user story was not done properly or there is a slippage which is being seen or you see a delivery milestone getting hit or there are organization challenges of iteration or anything everything we ensure that we revisit the risk at the end of every sprint no but sir it is the responsibility of the product owner to ensure that he will have the visibility about the product and what are the risk which is there so risk to shape is the review we are giving to the product owner We who tell product this? owner. Yeah. We means manager and the QA leaders. Who create this risk register in case of agile according to your? No, no risk register is not. It's there. managers. It's managers. Dependency and risk management is manager's job, like any other model you follow, uh -huh. whether it is waterfall or it is agile. Okay. But it is product owners. Like we need to update him again. Coming back, he is spending money on it, right? He needs to be updated. He needs to be informed that the software we are developing for you still has these risks. so features dalne ke badle please come back and let's ensure the quality is met so let's ensure that these testings are planned and that's where the qa leaders play a very key role so whoever does that testing a dev member can do that testing right we do a gorilla testing at end of every feature what we do is feature is developed the dev team is saying that everything is good and fine and we have done all the testing automation is done essay is made everything is done we give it to some other scrum team guys break this feature now do a gorilla testing of this feature right And we come back and give a report to the product owner that we see a big challenge in that. Basically, risk to ship is nothing but you are removing technical debt. Is what you are doing. It's not. We are an any type of risk. We are analyzing and visiting the risk after every sprint, and we are updating our product owner on the way our release is moving, which quality our release is. we have a single definition of done for every user story for every feature for every role there is just one definition of done the user story gets accepted only if that definition of done gets met okay, but as a release then see now the testing <coughs> still vary so, so, so there can be there can gorilla testing is never part of a definition of done definition of done happens that reviews are done and accepted uh, internationalization is done documentation is completed fts are automated and 100% pass uts are automated and 100% pass all these kind of stuff there might be user stories jiske andar definition of done ke sare items applicable nahi hai right because if it is a testing story there is no code review required but then there are other things four or five things which are applicable to that case So what I'm trying to say, if a story is in a backlog, there is a definition of done, and we have a single definition of done which is followed for us. There might be certain points which are not applicable. We split a super set of them. We split a super set. We strike it off if they are not applicable while review. Yeah. No. They groom it. Like I said, we just started a feature. We started a release. We have assigned features or the epics to different teams. So grooming will happen only for those epics on which they will be working. So how did the other team do or gorilla testing because they don't understand the feature? They understand the product. They don't understand the feature, but end of the day, everybody should know the product we are delivering. It's a voicemail system we are using every day, right? So. So it's not about the new feature; it's about the complete product. No, no. You have a screen. There are two new buttons over there, guys. Go back and use it. That's how when we give it to an independent team, even they are going to test it. So this much of knowledge they need to have. Everybody needs to have it, especially the senior members need to have. The TLDs need to have that. And you don't find any problem in terms of the team say that we are already full with our capacity. No, that's product owner's responsibility that he takes out that effort and bandwidth because gorilla testing is a story. It's a user story, and it needs to be prioritized by the product owner if he feels it is important. When the, the inputs are going or this testing is being done. So what we say, even if we are spending an hour on anything, we are doing it for the product owner. He has to say yes that we are doing it. Even many times those things are engineering things, but product owner should understand why we are doing it. So, so what's it on the risk part? Uh, what I don't understand is when will you see? There is a QA. I understand he is because he is doing the integration. He will know the risk, or he will come to know that in deployment scenario, this and this can be mistaken and all that. QA is one person. But the when the team is grooming the uh, user story, or when the team is executing, that time also they will find the risk. That's right. How do you uh, how do you uh, feed back that uh, thing to the product owner that he is aware of the risk? So our sprint review readout is in that format. That we are picking up these stories. These are the dependencies, and we see these risks associated with these stories. That's at the time of sprint planning, which happens. Okay. and that like he mentioned about the risk register like we do used to do in our uh, 
waterfall days that risk register is still maintained and even in between in the daily standards if any risk is identified the scrum master goes and adds it over there so that it is revisited and evaluated and everybody has a vision towards it so that risk register is maintained it is no different okay. similarly a dependency register is maintained dependency can come any time you might have not thought about it in sprint planning and it suddenly came out in between the execution so i think a lot of people staring at me the time is over i'll just take this slide okay sorry these are the few things uh, which we felt really helped us and this is uh, first one especially is an organization wide uh, approach which we are trying to follow is the left shift approach for qualification please spend as much as time in ut so uh, what we are trying to say is that 80% should be ut if there are some cases like ut should be this way out of ut it should be only maybe 40% we are doing in ft and in the si stage it should be more minimum the reason is maintaining executing finding defects at that stage is really very costly really very costly so please focus on ut as much as possible and again keep asking below questions this is really important are we doing enough testing or are we doing too much of testing because we feel very good if we test each and every line of code and we do every testing whatever we know about right but is that enough and frankly we have started tracking in a release that how much feature are we developing and how much is the engineering overhead in that delivery so our goal is that every time we have to reduce that engineering overhead and that engineering overhead can only be reduced if we do automation if we have a productivity improvement and we have started tracking that in every release continuous risk assessment which i just spoke about quality strategy this is what qa leaders do when our release has just started we have a proper quality strategy about it how the code reviews will be done like in which format that's normally required these type of guidelines right what are the different types of testings which will be done how will be the deployment testing being done what is our build strategy and all those things and last please don't take any shortcuts so i don't know how much time i have setting some higher goals we have zero defects 100% automation i think we have spoken about all of them almost so i think we have done about it so these are uh, certain things which we have followed that time bound meetings uh, you have to have an agenda you cannot use a mailing alias please use 2 ncc optional and mandatory people and if you have to start a meeting there has to be an owner and the meeting has to end on that time and we have those rat holing uh, stuff in every meeting room if somebody is rat holing maybe i am doing it right now they raise it that the time is up please stop the meeting so that's really very important because lot many hours get wasted because of this so i think there is a big list but i will skip all these things and i want to stop thank you